Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and a term worth having. When a person is available, they are available. When a person is not available, they're not available. Something I often teach to business people who are often seen as rude and don't get that is if they are truly busy, meaning they're about to leave to go somewhere, they're about to do something, they're about to enter a meeting, do not take the call. The last thing you want to say to a prospective client or a strategic alliance or a potential profitable partnership is, I'm sorry, I don't have time for this, I have to go, or something along those lines implying that they don't have time anymore to talk to you because they don't like the topic that you're wanting to talk to them about. You see, if you don't have time to talk to people, then don't make like you do by answering the phone. But don't pretend that our technology is perfect. Do not pretend that our companies aren't pocketing our minutes. Do not pretend that technology partners can't pretend to give you service when they actually aren't, and yet they're still taking money. You see, one of the hardest parts about the cell phone network for people and consumers is proving that they've actually used those minutes. Unless, of course, they have, like we used to have on cell phones, a ticker taper going off while you're talking that says you're at 30 minutes or you're at 40 minutes. Then you know how many marvelous minutes you've got left on your plan. But there are different technologies that people can use according to the internet and what's advertised that allows people to allegedly use a phone line for free over Wi-Fi, like me, or even over your own home network, in a way, because you can transfer those calls to your actual cell phone, like I used to do all the time, to protect my privacy and my cell phone number from being abused. But there are people who lie to people. There are people who say, this guy is a pain in the ass because I'm the monitor of our technology network, and I just see it as that, but the truth is, they're not that individual. They are not the individual who are getting the text messages. They're not the individual who are getting the calls. They're not even the ones who are making the calls at all, but they're sitting in the sidelines as a company saying, we're not going to allow this anymore. I used to have really important documents in my LinkedIn account. I never deleted them. There was a reason for that, because I didn't want them deleted. I wanted those documents there. I could delete all the other fucking text messages and in-mail and all the shit they offer to us, but the one thing I needed the most was that document and that date. I never did that, but who did that? Did someone hack me on a Wi-Fi? Did someone get onto a computer that I once used and find their way back onto my stuff? I'm usually pretty careful about that, and libraries in particular are really good about that, but that doesn't prevent people who monitor the network from interfering with people's rights. And it doesn't prevent a company from being lied to by a total stranger and getting things deleted. What I find amazing is how people lie about their rights. They openly say, I'm in charge of you. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to harm you. I'm going to call police. I'm going to say, no, it's all about you, isn't it? Because if it was about me or someone else that you're doing that to, you might take a moment to have a conversation or two. And then once you figure out what's really happening, then you might involve a third party. You see, people are quick to call police today, which is somewhat true. But people very rarely think about their legal liability to the shit that they pull because they're just too immature to talk to you. 